It's Plastic Surgery Secrets Talk, the podcast where we go over everything related to the secrets of plastic surgery that you want to know, need to know, but can't seem to find in your research on the internet because there's too much information out there. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Spiegel from the Spiegel Center in Newton, Massachusetts. I'm so happy to have as our special guest for this episode, Dr. Stephen Perlman from Perlman Aesthetic Surgery on Park Avenue in Manhattan. If you don't know Dr. Perlman, then you're obviously not in this industry because Dr. Perlman is a uh, past president of the Facial Plastic Surgery Academy, has held positions in every major aesthetic organization and conference, and has always been extremely generous with his time and knowledge, especially with other surgeons sharing his experience and techniques. And he is one of the world's experts in facial plastic surgery. So we're so happy to have you on this conversation. Thank you for having me. Okay, so... One of the things that you do a lot of, I know, is rhinoplasty and revision rhinoplasty. And you were mentioning to me earlier that, uh, as as I know and you know and, and some people listening might know, there are times when you need to add something to the nose to restore the structure or to give you the foundation for making the nose look right. So can you tell us more about that? Well, in, even in primary rhinoplasty, it used to be a reductive operation. Remove, remove, remove. And that's why it got such a bad rap back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and those little scoop pinch noses that not only didn't look good, but didn't work well. Because in, in terms of rhinoplasty, form and function go together. So I do, I do grafts in about 98% of my primary rhinoplasties. And even more so, it's more important in revision rhinoplasty because you have to store, put back the structure that's been taken away that's caused all these cosmetic and breathing issues. Okay, and where are you getting the material for these graphs? Is that something you can just pick up at uh, Walmart or Amazon? Well, for, for primary operations, most of the time we use your own septum. I'm sure everybody's heard of a devious septum operation. Well, we do that as if we were fixing a devious septum like your you know, local laryngologist will do. Uh, and they'll take that cartilage and use it for grafting. But unfortunately, with revision surgery, the septum is often either not enough because it needs a lot more grafts, or it's been used as part of their primary surgery, septoplasty, rhinoplasty. Yeah, where they took it away, right? Even exactly. though they didn't need to. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, you, don't, you do have the skin on skin, so it functions normally, not affecting breathing function. But you know, if you need more cartilage, there are other sources. And I prefer paste this, this other sources of ear cartilage, rib cartilage, your own rib, or a donor rib, which, which to me is from a dead person. Okay. Uh, and I'm gathering from that last statement, you prefer to get rib from the individual. Well, because my patients range for revision, they range from 20s to 60s. And you want that car to last for another 40 to 60 years. And a lot of people are now using something called MTF, where you, you buy it from a company. It's, it's, it's donor cartilage, but it's dead. It's like freeze-dried. It's, it's dead. It comes on dry ice. And it, it's, they're getting great results, and people are showing publications, and oh, yeah, great results. I'm showing that six months, a year, even a year and a half. I want to see these patients 20, 30 years from now. Also, if it's a really devastated nose, and I do a lot of revision rock glasses, your nose has really destroyed. You need a lot of cartilage. Did one segment of rib, we can get all the grass we need to restore the nose instead of multiple packages of MTF. And people say, oh my God, my own rib? Yeah, we can get a segment four or five centimeters long that we can use to rebuild the entire nose. So then we take it, we slice the thin slices as thick as we want. Also with MTF, the, the donor cartilage, since it does not have as good an integrity, it's hard to slice thinner without cracking or losing integrity. Natural, light rib cartilage, much easier to shape, much easier to thin out and create nice delicate grafts. So actually we, could, we can get thinner noses, and more delicate grafts, which make a little more attractive nose in the long run. So you're saying that the cartilage that you can take from the rib, when it's uh, on your own rib, it's more pliable, it's more uh, relaxed. So that's a good secret. So if you need a real subtle result, something that's going to not show, but you still need a lot of strength and longevity, getting a piece of rib cartilage might be the answer. It's, it's my preference. And, and um, I've actually just uh, spearheaded a study that my fellows presented next week at the Facial Plastic Surgery meeting that I approached uh, six colleagues, or seven of us, who harvest rib grass anywhere from office operating rooms to M3, M3 surgery centers and hospitals. And we have over a thousand cases. We have less than a 1% of 
complication rate, one of the oh, yeah. interesting complications. The biggest thing that people call is little pneumothorax, a little air leak. But even then, the modern literature, which most people don't read the, the chest surgery literature who are in plastic surgery, facial plastic surgery, they don't even treat pneumothorax with, with chest tubes anymore. People hear like chest tubes, big, huge things stuck between your yeah, It gets side. absorbed on its own as long as you're breathing okay. Even then, that one, less than 1% of it gets it, if they have no trouble breathing, go home. Yeah. We, we don't even need to get an x-ray. If there's no symptoms, you don't treat it. So the patients go home, it resolves on its own, yet they have cartilage can be there for the rest of their life. So that's a great secret. So that's secret number one. Your nose requires a lot of support in order to look right and to stay in the right position and to work right, and you got to get structural support, and oftentimes that means getting a new source of cartilage. What's the most common problem you're seeing in revision rhinoplasty in New York? Number one is uh, nowadays because their noses are crooked. Mm. Number two is they had nose too scooped. And uh, number three is difficult to breathe in. They, they have compromised some nasal collapse. We have to restore the, the side of the walls of the nose, we call the nasal valve. There's internal mm. valve, which is the middle part of the nose, the external valve, which is the nostril support. So restoring support, again, both improves function and cosmesis. So that's secret number two, is that uh, having trouble breathing through your nose is not going to be just the deviated septum. Sometimes you're going to have a lot of trouble breathing through your nose, and it's not a problem of the septum at all. Your septum can be perfectly straight, but if the sides of your nose are collapsing in too easily, you're not going to have the breathing that you want. Right. And that's a way to fix. Now, what are you doing for people who have been overly scooped out or need to lift the top of their nose? You're going to take a piece of rib cartilage, mm -hmm. and do you prefer to put in a solid piece or a diced up piece? I, so okay. there, are, there, are, there are a number of options for restoring. The, the, the classic is using a solid piece of rib. That's where... Rib grafts get a bad rap because it can work, even with yeah. hands. So then, Roland Dano came up with a technique where you would dice it up and put it in something called fashion. It's like a little, little taco. A little burrito. Of your own fashion. Um, and yeah, you get that from works, the side of the head. But the problem is that you get contraction and it doesn't always give you nice structure. So now, uh, Abel Yard Hasman from, from popularized in Switzerland. Switzerland popularized, we dice it up and use tissue glue. And we, I use a, either use a half syringe or a press that was uh, invented by Yang Jujang from, from Korea. Korea. In Korea, rhinoplast is all about augmentation. All about lifting so it up. It's either it's silicone dice, or cartilage. Dice cartilage does not. So we make these nice on-lay graphs. We can make it as big as we want, as long as we want, as thick as we want. We place it on the bridge. That last thing in the case, usually dicing up rib cartilage, and that creates our, our beautiful bridge that will not work. That's a great tip and it's a great secret for people listening to this. Now, how about a secret for doctors? Do you have a special method of dicing the cartilage? Because that's time consuming and sometimes challenging to keep it from bouncing around. Uh, if you want to use a little bit of saline because it does bounce around. The problem is too much and then it dilutes it when you put your glue on. Um, also, the other key is I have a fellow and, and, and <laughs> they can while, spend some time. <laughs> while, after I, we've harvested, we've done most of the structural work. I start putting the tip together. I tell them, oh, this is what I'm going to do next in the tip. The, the big thing my fellow gets to do in those cases, they get to sit there and dice the carpet. It's like the sous chef chopping onions for the sauce. <laughs> the Bill Paul Massif, he tells fellow, it's, it, you know, you get, it's like, the, like, um, like dicing or... garlic. You know, it, it's just like that. We got to mince chef, the garlic. If you're a chef and you want to mince garlic, exact technique. And that's the size you want as well. You want a millimeter or less. That's it's, for sure. The smaller pieces are important, especially in people with thin skin, where otherwise you could feel a little bit of irregularity. All right. Outstanding secrets. Thank you for listening to the Plastic Surgery Secrets podcast. If you've enjoyed this program, please make sure to listen to all of our other episodes. If you're looking for more information on this topic or any other, and you'd like to reach out to Dr. Perlman, how does, how does the audience reach out to you? My email is drperlman at mdface.com. Our Instagram is at Perlman Aesthetic Surgery. See, even you couldn't remember the name. <laughs> and uh, if you want to reach out to me, it's at Dr. Spiegel, D-R-S-P-I-E-G-E-L-I before E, of course. Thank you for listening, and we'll look forward to seeing you on our next podcast.